Hi, I'm Mike Falanc, a portrait photographer from Los Angeles, and today we're doing Portraits in Joshua Tree. Let's get creative. So for today's portrait shoot, I went with the Fujifilm X100V because of its film simulations. The outfits the girls are gonna be wearing have a really nostalgic vibe, and the film simulation is gonna blend perfectly with that. Today we're gonna to use a film recipe for Portra 400. To learn more about film recipes, head on over to FujiXWeekly.com, where you will find a detailed description of each recipe, as well as the custom settings you'll need to enter to use them. Later in the video, I'll walk you through how I edited the raw files to achieve the look for the shoot. So for today's portrait shoot, we're gonna be working with two very talented models. I'd like you to meet Jessica and Joy. Hi, Hi you two, you look great. Thank you. Thank you. What can you tell me about these looks you put together? So we both entered a contest at New Chic and they selected the top 10, we both made it. So we were supposed to create an original design that walks the runway mm -hmm. for spring 2021, 2021 after the whole mm -hmm. pandemic and stuff. Right. Yeah, it was supposed to be inspirational outfit for spring and summer 2020. 2021. You guys look amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, for my look, I wanted something that, you know, women can wear at the beach and still um, like a two-piece and they could put on this skirt and like uh, maybe another top if they want to go to brunch afterwards or something and this hat to go along with it. So since my outfit's supposed to be post-quarantine, I wanted to choose something that was a representation of the development and the growth that we've done during quarantine. So that's why I chose the butterfly. Butterfly goes through a beautiful transformation. And I wanted to create something that was new, was fresh, and a girl can wear if she's going out to a party. So it's very versatile, like I like to make my outfits. And this skirt kind of takes off, and then these buttons kind of strap themselves onto here so that you can have it on the shoulder, off the shoulder. Well, what do you say we take a look around this place and see what other spots we like? Let's do it. Yeah? Let's do it. That's it, that's working. I'm just gonna stop my aperture down, a little bit more depth of field, since there's two people now. Oh, look at that. Jessica just snapped right into character. That was awesome. Good expression. No funny faces. Come on, Joy. Joy's making funny faces. <laughs> Good. Yes. Now, do one where you're both looking at each other. The challenge when you're shooting two subjects is you gotta remember to focus on the person who's closest to camera. Otherwise, it can look weird. I love it. Yeah? Good, yeah. Should we see what else we got going on in this backyard? Yeah. yeah. Let's explore. So we had this fun idea to have Joy sitting in the wheelbarrow and Jessica giving her a push. I picked this spot because there's a streak of sunlight that's gonna act as a hair light on the back of their heads. Oh my God, you two are too cute. I originally planned to show you the straight out of camera JPEGs, the way I did in my last Fujifilm simulation video. But given the lighting challenges of the day, I ended up tapping the raw files to get the most dynamic range. Let me walk you through my process. You can see here in the raw file that we clipped some of the highlights in this image, which is represented by the red on the screen. This is a pretty common problem to run into anytime you try to backlight your subject. But don't worry, I can show you how to clean this up in a few simple steps. So the first thing I did was to change my color profile from Adobe Color to Fuji's Classic Chrome as the Portra 400 recipe is based off of this profile. Then I cruised on down to the auto expose button to see how Lightroom would go about fixing this image. After seeing what Lightroom suggests, I'm gonna agree with all these changes and bring my exposure back up to zero. Now the Portra 400 film recipe 
includes instructions to turn up the clarity in camera. I'm gonna recommend, however, you skip this step in favor of adding clarity in post because enabling the in-camera clarity will noticeably slow your camera down. Next, I move on down to the tone curve where I add a medium contrast to help this image pop. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now all that's left to do is grab a brush, make sure I have white selected, and just paint over the spots and the highlights that are still clipping red. That's looking better. Let's pull up the before and after to compare. Okay, as you can see, the highlights in the sky are no longer clipping, while the grills look brighter and more vibrant. I really like the added clarity in the tone curve adjustments too. So while Jessica and Joy are changing into their second looks, I scouted this spot out here, which is gonna help us capture that beautiful desert sunset. So we just have a few minutes left of the sunset. I've got my flash out here to fill them since they're backlit. They look amazing. I love the props. Let's get to work. All right, that's a perfect pose, you two. Right now I'm framing all of you and I can see the balloons. Good thinking, back to back, yep. Perfect. Can you give me even more bend in your knee, Jessica? Yep, that's it, yep, on your toe, that's perfect. Great. And right now, it's just like miles of desert behind you. Nobody would know that civilization is anywhere near. I started with my light and TTL mode, which for those who don't know, is like auto exposure for flashes. TTL stands for through the lens and it enables your flash to use the camera's built-in light meter. This is a good trick when you need a quick exposure. Usually I'll start in TTL, grab my exposure, then switch the flash back to manual to lock in that exposure. Because the sun was setting so fast and the light was changing so quickly, I ended up leaving my flash in TTL mode on this shoot. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is silhouette you girls. So we're letting the sun light Jessica now, but so that there's still a shining rim light on her hair, I just put the flash behind her. I really enjoy using the Portra 400 film recipe. It expands on Fuji's already exceptional film simulations and brings a bit of that Kodak magic. With your um, right hand, can you sort of lift your skirt up and hold it? Right hand, lift my hand. Yeah, just sort of hold it out. There you go. I feel like this is one of your signature poses. It is. <laughs> I was pleased to learn that the in-camera grain effect carried over to the raw files. I prefer the random organic way that Fuji renders grain to the uniform patterns you get from simply turning up the grain slider in Lightroom. It's more filmic in my opinion. Drop a comment below if you'd be curious to see me compare this film recipe to 35 millimeter Kodak film. We've worn her out. I think at least one of those is a keeper. So that concludes our desert portrait shoot. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. And thank you, Jessica. Thank you. I couldn't be more pleased with the shots we got. Like and subscribe for more portrait content. And head on over to their channels and give them a follow. You know you want to. Yeah.